In this video, let's talk about Patrick Mahomes reaching an old age for AFC standards, the greatness of Andy Reid, some all pro players that were announced today, and then let's take a look at the Chiefs' Arctic Circle play, examining the tears of those who found this play offensive and attempt to determine if it really was. But first, how about those? All right, you ready? Sub if you're new, hit that like button if you're ready for some playoffs, and let's get into this video, starting with some interesting info that I found out about the AFC playoff picture, and that is Patrick Mahomes is the oldest quarterback in the AFC playoff bracket. And upon initially hearing that, I thought, wait, how? This can't be right. He's pretty young, but it's true. Look at it. First up is Patrick Mahomes, who's 27, which is young, but... The rest are younger. Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, 26. Trevor Lawrence is 23. Justin Herbert, 24. Lamar Jackson, 26. Tyler Huntley, 24. Tua Tagovailoa, 24. Skylar Thompson, 25. And the NFC, of course, looks a bit different as you have Tom Cobb Webb Brady, the skeleton himself, at the geriatric football age of 45 years old. Good. God, but in regards to the AFC, it's pretty impressive how many great young quarterbacks are in that conference, and the future is definitely gonna be a fun one. With that being said, though, at the young age of only 27 years old, Patrick Mahomes has a bit of a veteran advantage here in the AFC. I mean, he has a ton of postseason experience in his five years as a starter. Don't believe me? Look at this, Matt Verderame. Matt Verderam of Arrowhead Addict recently said, Patrick Mahomes has won eight playoff games in his career. Every other AFC starting QB in these playoffs has won seven postseason games combined. Take Tom Brady out and Mahomes has only won one, W-O-N-O-N-E, won one less playoff game than the entire bracket. He's 27 years old. That's W-I-L-D, wild. Anyway, Mahomes commented on this very thing in a recent presser saying this. I feel like it's changed. I have two kids now. I'm married, old soul. So uh, I am uh, li literally the oldest quarterback in the AFC. It speaks to the talent that we have in the AFC. The guys that it looks I'm looking around that are going to be there for a long time. So I'll be the old head in the AFC for a while now. Now I'll try to use that experience uh, to my advantage. And when he said oldest in the AFC, I'm pretty sure he meant oldest in the AFC playoffs because there's older quarterbacks in the AFC than Mahomes take Russell, let's ride Wilson, for example, he's 34. Here comes the airplane. From here, I wanna spend a little bit of time bragging on the greatness of Coach Reed, who just recently celebrated 10 years since coming to Kansas City to be the head coach. And he's not someone who is considered for coach of the year, even though he constantly has his team at the tippity top almost every single year. And one way to measure greatness is to look at W's sustained throughout a season. And the Kansas City Chiefs have played 10 seasons with 12 or more wins, and those years were 1968, 1995, 1997, and 2003. Then Coach Reed comes in, 2016, 12 or more wins. 2018, 12 or more wins. 2019, 2020, 21, 22, all with 12 or more wins. So outside of the Andy Reed era, the Chiefs have won more than 12 games only four times. Meanwhile, with Andy Reed, they've had 12 or more wins six times, five of those seasons being consecutive since Mahomes took the helm. And... That is why sometimes I think it's good for all of us to just sit back and enjoy it all. Being a Chiefs fan my entire life has led to many letdowns throughout the years, but since Andy Reid came to town, everything has taken a major turn for the better, and I've been really trying to just enjoy it. The golden era of Chiefs Kingdom. We will one day, mark my words, look back on these years and say, remember the good old days with Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid? So please, enjoy the times while it's here. I beg of thee. And then let's continue the talk about greatness because today the NFLPA released their very first NFLPA All-Pro team. Four Chiefs players landed on that list. But first, here's what the NFLPA had to say about how these players were decided upon. Quote, this year we made the call with the first players All-Pro team. We asked players across the league to select who had the most impact this season. The players were tasked with voting for the best player at their same position and positions they line up against. Also, the NFLPA did not allow a player who missed five or more games to be considered. A player cannot vote for himself or a teammate and players only vote for their own position or a position they lined up against. So there you go, with that context in mind, here were the results. The quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, tight end, Travis Kelsey, an interior D lineman, Chris Jones, punter, Tommy Townsend, place holding excluded. All right, just kidding about the place holding part, but Tommy was the punter that was voted in, and there you have it. Mahomes, Kelsey, Chris Jones, and Tommy Townsend were all voted on by their peers to make the list of the players' all-pro team 
take that for what you will, but I love it. Wish there was more. Thought maybe we'd see Tooney on there, maybe Creed, but Jason Kelsey got voted over Creed Humphrey. I'm not gonna shame anybody for that, but maybe next year. All right, now we gotta talk about this snow globe, spinning huddle, Arctic circle of death, reindeer formation of a play that the Chiefs ran in the red zone against the Raiders last week, a play that could have had a potentially savage meaning to it, yes, such as the Raiders drove a lap around Arrowhead after their 2020 win, so the Chiefs mocked it in their own stadium just last week, but the Chiefs will never, ever, ever admit to something as petty as that, so we will never know for sure. What we do know for sure, though, is that this is a play that they've been working on since last season. This is what happens when a whole bunch of guys just stay in a cube room for so long. Yep. that they just start making up shit. I came in on Friday, and this was the play in the red zone. The it quarterback was, room is the one that came up with this play? Yeah, the QB room definitely came up with this one. We called it the Arctic Circle of Death, Snow Globe Left. Pat, we call it the laboratory in there. He gets the guys down there, and then they, they don't put their name on it. They just bring it to me, and I've got 51% of the vote, so if I like it, you know, we go with it. <laughs> and then the players enjoy doing that stuff, so a little creativity that they, they come up with these things, so we just throw them out there. It was something we had, we had kind of practiced on actually last year uh, of doing that kind of getting confusion going and getting to the line and snapping it. We didn't get the chance to run it last year. Um, it kind of got thrown, not away, but you, you kind of, as you season gets started up, you go back to the basics, and as the season went back on, I was like kind of nudging Coach Reed. I was like, hey, let's, let's bring it back in a different way. And So the QB room drew it up and presented it to Coach Reed, who has 51% of the vote, and he liked it, so they implemented it, and when it was time to run the play, Travis Kelsey then described the team's reaction as they were in the huddle, spinning around in circles as it was happening in real time, and it was pretty funny to hear. When I put my arms around the guys... Mm -hmm. And we started going to circle. I was just like, Woo! We're was, doing it, it! was anybody laughing in the middle of the play? There had to be people laughing in the well, middle. We of all the play. were like, Oh wow, we're really gonna run this. This is what we're doing. When the Joker caught it and I saw him like break that first like I don't even want to say it was a tackle, but broke broke through one of the tackles. It was like, Yeah, it's working. Yeah, it's working until it's not. Tony did get into the end zone, yes, but Creed Humphrey was called on a hold that uh was questionable, but yeah, sure, you pathetic flag-throwing zebra, whatever makes you sleep at night, you little bum. Okay, it's not that serious, all right? Tony scored on a jet sweep the very next play, and that's all she wrote, but wait, it's not, because in this day and age, everyone is offended by something, even if that something is really nothing, but spinning in the huddle before lining up to snap the ball, you little babies, comments on Twitter, they were going nuts, even some national, head talking media blue check mark types. They were feeling left out and needing to voice their own opinions on how disrespectful that play was. Some Raiders fans were saying that the Raiders should have cleared the bench and fought the Chiefs over that play. Some even saying the Raiders were soft for not instantly erupting and storming the field to war over such disrespect. Are you serious? Meanwhile, I'm over here like, what? Bro, what are you talking about, man? And Travis Kelsey did weigh in on this, saying it could potentially come across as show Bodie. However, it's just the Raiders. Yeah, it was definitely a style points kind of play. I thought it was only supposed to be for Christmas because a play like that can it can look like a f you play. You don't want to be uh, a showboat. Yeah, you know what I mean. You don't want to. Yeah, but it's the Raiders, so I don't. I don't know. It's just the Raiders. <laughs> but it was explained later that they just weren't able to run the play around Christmas, so Mahomes opted to run it this week instead, and Andy Reid gave the green light. So I don't know. You tell me. Was this play really an offensive play, or was it not? Is there some deeper meaning? Maybe watch my YouTube short on it if you're wondering what I mean. Or was it just Andy Reid and the team having fun? Let me know in the comments down below, but do not go anywhere because it does not stop here. You then had a Denver Broncos player also extremely upset by this, borderline needing to seek a safe space and also maybe some therapy as he weighed in about this horribly offensive circle spin. And that player was offensive guard Quinn Miners. But before we look at what he said, here's a little bit of info on him. Miners was the Broncos third round pick in the 2021 NFL draft and currently is one of the highest graded guards in the NFL, grading out even a tad higher than Joe Tooney. So he is a great player of the game who 
also happens to enjoy working out in the middle of nowhere, teabagging trees and lifting weights in his long lost search for Sasquatch during the off season, which is kind of cool, but uh, he seems to have a very weak and sensitive mind. And I say all that to say this, after the Broncos somehow managed to beat the Chargers 31 to 28 last weekend, Miners was asked about the Chiefs spinning huddle play in the locker room. And uh, here's what he had to say. I said it before, I'm, I'm sick of losing to the Chiefs. That is like my number one goal that I'm like have like looking at every day is I really want to beat them. Um, I'm gonna say it because it's it's one on my on my chest. The fact that they did that little ring around a rosy play against the Raiders like genuinely like like pissed me off, and I'm I'm just excited for that for that day and for that moment. And that's one of the things that I'm preparing for going into next year is to be ready to beat them. All right, well, I guess my question is, who hurt you, buddy? You're sick of losing to the Chiefs. You've only been on the team since 2021, and the Broncos have been losing to them faithfully since 2015. So I'm going to need you to maybe eat a gummy or two. They're legal in your state. And just relax, man. I mean, why is this guy that concerned about a game that he did not even play in? I also find it ironic that the Broncos are god-awful on offense, 32nd in the NFL in many offensive categories, and their offensive line let Russell Wilson get sacked 63 times this season, which is the most sacks allowed in the entire league by any team over the last two regular seasons, yet this man, Quinn the Weiner Miners, is pissed off at the fact that the Chiefs spun around in a circle. This man has issues. And I'm not the only guy who was baffled by this reaction as both Travis Kelsey and his brother Jason seemed confused about this as well. Okay. Why? I mean, because that's what I'm saying. It's kind of a f you play. It is in a, in a sense. I guess he doesn't like it. He doesn't yeah. like it. Well, be Miners. better. I don't know. It just sounds like, I mean, yeah, he's a Broncos guy. Not surprising. A Broncos guy is feeling a certain way about the Chiefs season. And I like Quinn Miners. Uh, I mean, this is a guy who was pass blocking a tree. If you guys can find that production. Oh, team, that's, that's uh, coming out. Is. You remember this guy? That's, and he's what? over here he, upset about the exactly. ring around the Rosie. This guy's what? styling on a tree, and now all of a sudden, ring around the posies not all only, bad? Not only, on, is he, not only is he doing that, he's recording it. <laughs> Jason really just said, be better. Well, be Miners. better. I don't know. Because he knows the Broncos are horrible, and they really need to work on fixing things in their own yard before glancing over next door at the well-kept yard of an opposing division rival. Now... I don't blame this guy for wanting to beat the Chiefs. Their arrival, the Chiefs have owned them for way longer than Walmart has, so I get it. But at the same time, dude, you gotta relax. They spun in a circle in the huddle, and at the end of the day, Quinn, you're gonna be okay. All right, well, if you made it this far, make sure to comment the word Sasquatch in honor of our new buddy, Quinn the Whiner Miners. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Yeah.